So I'm really excited to bring on my next guest onto the Lewis Nichols show. Um, she is just such an incredibly talented and extremely funny um, actress. If you've watched any of, of the shows that she's been in, she would have definitely made you laugh. So let's say hello to Do McEachan. How are you? Hello, Lewis. I'm really good, thank you. Yeah, I'm as good as can be for this crazy lockdown with uh, homeschooling a 16-year-old and being mental health officer and fitness kind of yeah I'm just trying to trying to keep keep going in these weird times well you know when obviously during the lockdown has that given you an opportunity in regards you know to, to being an actress and, and an artist to get creative and kind of work on some projects that you were kind of on the back burner for a long time well there's so little happening um we were very lucky to be able to shoot the two doors down Christmas special that was uh, kind of bristling with COVID uh, protocol, we had to kind of do tests and then isolate, and then we would we weren't allowed to sort of eat together. We had to sort of sit at separate tables, and it was really bizarre. But we managed to shoot it in five days, so that was that's the only job I've done in nine months. That's how bad it is. So um, there's you know if you can't if you're not on stage and you're not you can't really go in and record stuff. I don't have recording equipment here. I'm a very real Luddite, so I don't, I'm not doing all my normal voiceovers and stuff. Um, and the, 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 what's difficult with um, getting cleared for things, you know, other jobs is you've got to have these sort of intense medicals where they ask you everything because they haven't got insurance for COVID. And I lost a job because I've got a bit of an underlying health issue and I told them too much information about, you know, this, this thing I'd had with my lungs and they were like, oh shit, well you can't do the job. And that was just gutting because there's so few jobs around. So now I'm just going to have to lie. D just don't, yeah. <laughs> I mean, no. We were talking just before we came on about Two Doors Down. And, you know, I'm genuinely not just saying this because you're on a show. It's my favourite comedy show. And um, me and my partner, we watch it every... We've watched every episode about ten times because it's just... Every time you watch it, you notice something else, whether it's just a little look that Christine's giving or something that Kathy's getting annoyed about. It's just incredible. And it's one of those shows where you can relate to the characters. Everyone's got a, a friend like Kathy, you know, and Colin that brag about what they've got. Um, you know, the way she puts Beth down. It's just brilliant. You must love being part of that show. Yeah, I'm so lucky that that show is just running and running. We're like rock stars in Scotland. I can't, I can't get down the street without women coming, running up towards me going, oh my God, it's Kathy. I love you. <laughs> Because I'm loud and I don't care and I, I, I tell the, the story is, you know, I'll, I'll come in, I'll get pissed, I'll high kick, I'll cry and I'll leave. It's kind of, it's pretty much, that's the simple, uh, you know, I'll always do something physical, um, you know, whether it's a crab or a dance or, because we're basically all sitting around in a sitting room, aren't we? Just talking yeah. about nothing. There's no plot. That's what I love about it. You know, one one story is just the freezer breaking down and what happens with how, you know, just cooking the food that's in the freezer, things like that. But I love the fact you've watched it. I, I hate watching myself, but I, the only way I can enjoy Two Doors Down is to watch it a couple of times and then see all the, the nuances and all the, the, the characterization is brilliant. And when we all got back together, we were so grateful to be working. We were so happy to be together and, and, we were in this beautiful lodge because normally we're in the most hideous shed uh, with a set <laughs> built in the shed in Dumbarton. It, it literally, it's 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 kind of really hard mentally to because you're in that room for like you know twelve hours a day just sitting with everyone doing the same scenes over and over again. So it was great being in that that sort of glass lodge looking out. It just made it a lot easier to film. Um, 
and and it was only a week whereas normally I go to Glasgow I'm up there for two months so um yeah I absolutely love it I'm so so lucky to be in it I I normally stay in character in a Glaswegian accent but this time I was really struggling with hearing my accent and thinking this doesn't sound good enough because I hadn't I wasn't match fit I just was just kind of just went up on the sleeper and was slightly in denial about the fact that I needed to do some work on it so uh, <laughs> So I, I started talking to myself in my hotel bedroom, walking around, speaking Glaswegian, and yeah, it's um, a show I'm very proud of. I mean, for those that haven't watched it, I mean, the, the characters that you've got, you've got Beth and Eric, who are just these nice, innocent neighbours that want a quiet life, um, but they just get, they're descended by the, their neighbours, you know, whether it's um, Christine just constantly wanting uh, a cup of tea or some food, or it, it's just brilliant. And then you've got, you know, you and Colin, um, Kathy and Colin are just hilarious. I mean, Kathy just likes to drink. She, she's got this mentality almost of a 18-year-old, um, um, and she's got this obsession with maybe turning... Uh, gay people straight and the amount of time she's giving more Gordon and Jazz a little peck on the lips it's just so brilliant to to watch and I mean it's do you remember the scene where you and uh Colin in the show are reenacting your um wedding dance yeah yeah that is just comedy go it's what I've never laughed out uh, so loud in my life when when you're doing that dance um, and I was even more annoyed when Michelle comes and turns the music off uh, and puts a stop to it yeah, bloody Michelle. Come on, she's such a kid. <laughs> Kathy hates her. <laughs> and also Colin fancies her a bit, which really upsets Kathy, which is uh, it's going to be interesting in the next series. Uh, one thing I did want to uh, do with you, just before we go on about uh, to some of your other projects, which is actually um, a little two doors down Kathy quiz to see how much you know about Kathy. Oh, my God. Okay, <laughs> interesting so we've got we've got 10 questions for you we're going to see how you get on um so what song and there's two that you can choose from uh what song is kathy dancing to at ian and jazz's flat warming party usher beth usher yeah yes. <laughs> wow uh, what does kathy do whilst christine is on the loo <laughs> christine is on the loo oh my god uh Oh, if it helps, no. Kathy is outside. She's, so Kathy is outside. Christine is inside on the loo, and you do something through the window. Oh, I, I yes, I push a firecracker through the window. <laughs> yes. um, what is the name of Colin's dad? Willie. <laughs> Correct. Three out of three. Um, what did Kathy and Colin bring back from holiday for Beth and Eric? A uh, ham on. That's right. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Ham on. Incredibly well. Um, what I'm did doing Colin well. buy? You're doing really well. Um, what did Colin buy for Kathy for Christmas after their holiday to France was cancelled? Say the question again, please, um, sir. Uh, what, what did uh, so what did Colin buy for Kathy for Christmas after their holiday to France was cancelled? A star. A star that's in the sky. Correct. Yes. Um, yes, called Kathy. Yeah. That's right. Do you know, I, I, you're doing really well. We played this game with uh, Martin Clunes before and we did it on about Doc Martin. He only got one right and that's so far you're 100%. So, yeah, What's you're doing my really prize? Well. What do I get? I need a good we'll prize. Have to send you something nice. <laughs> um, when Alan and Michelle stayed overnight um, at Beth's house, Kathy was seething uh, about it. But she goes upstairs to wake up Michelle so she can witness what? Uh, yes. Um, uh, it, uh, he, he was eating rhubarb. Eating rhubarb. <laughs> <for> the... <laughs> wow, this is. This is brilliant. Uh, what did now? This is brilliant. This was one of my favourite um, scenes. What did Kathy and Colin give for a present at um, Christmas for Baby Madison after clearly forgetting? I'm sorry. I know. I'm going to know the answer to everything. A bottle of tonic. <laughs> <laughs> the way the, the way you delivered it as well, and you just present this and the the, the reaction on everyone's face. Um, 
So when Kathy was burgled, she was she got hysterical when she discovered what was stolen from her cutlery drawer. Valium. Correct. Um, number nine. What did Beth? Uh, hang on, here we go. Oh yeah, what did uh, Beth and Eric do to put Kathy's nose out of jo joint on the day of her hot tub party? So what did they do that annoyed Kathy? She stormed oh, in they and want she told Colin. They wanted to go home to pack? No, no. Oh, I could have got yeah, this one. Well, I'll give you that. It, it was, they were going on holiday, but yes, yeah, they wanted to on. go and pack for holiday. Yeah. Um, and then the last one to get 10 out of 10. Um, mm -hmm. What did Kathy do to Michelle and Alan's house? She took her little JCB digger and clawed down the front porch. She did. <laughs> That's where we saw a completely different side to, to Kathy because we'd seen that she'd be crazy, outspoken. Um, yeah, I mean, and the favourite scene, of course, was when Colin was doing something naughty with a laptop and she, Kathy made him promise he wouldn't do a, a certain something ever again. It was just fantastic. What you For you as a person, are you anything like the character of, of Kathy? Do you know, at the, um, when we shot the Christmas special, we were all staying for the first time. We all had to stay together in a hotel to be in a bubble. So we were in this big um, hotel, which was virtually empty in the middle of the countryside. And it was the first time at the end of the shoot, we all actually went and had a drink together. And my God, I absolutely was Kathy. We weren't allowed <laughs> to be in our hotel bedrooms. So we were given this suite by the hotel who were all very excited and loads of Prosecco. We got absolutely smashed and I just danced and El Elaine, Christine, Elaine C. Smith put on loads of songs. Arabella and I, the three of us were just dancing. And I mean, I was doing all kinds of crazy Kathy dancing. Yeah, I I'm definitely <laughs> a quite, there's definitely a seam of Kathy running quite strongly through me. I don't like to be told what to do and, but the, um, the sort of, I'm just fascinated by, you know, one-upmanship and, um, and power, how people use their, you know, it psychologically put people down is really interesting. So I find that fascinating. So I channel quite a few different people that I know who are a bit like Kathy. And uh, people say to me, oh, that's me, isn't it? When I'm pissed, that's me. It's a kind of, it's a kind of quite hard to play drunk and to, to, you know, to do the drunk and get drunker without getting sort of boring. And in, Chris, yeah. in the Christmas special, we, we filmed all out of sequence, which was really, really difficult. So we filmed like the end at the beginning and then we filmed the beginning at the end. So I found that very hard because I had to just plot her drunkenness. Um, and then the director would say something like, that's a bit too drunk or that's not drunk enough, or, um, so yeah, yeah, to answer your question, there's definitely, you know, Kathy, uh, Kath, my, uh, a bit of outrageousness, um, but hopefully not the alcoholism. <laughs> I mean, I think what makes this show so good is, I mean, I watch a lot of comedy shows and I, I love it, but sometimes the acting isn't always there. But with Two Doors Down, you've got this thing where the lines are being delivered, but then every character's doing something else. So you look at uh, Elaine C. Smith, she's always got this little look where she's reacting to maybe something that you've said or, or Colin said. And it's just brilliant. And I think that's what makes the show so strong, because not only have you got someone delivering a funny line, you've then got somebody else acting out a reaction. Um, you know, it just works incredibly well. And I'm looking forward to the, I mean, can we expect a, a new series this year? Yeah, so we were about to shoot series five in uh, in lockdown last March. So um, uh, so that was a real blow because I, you know we were all ready to go up and in March, and so that's you know it's nearly a whole year that we won't have done it. So I hope they're going to. I mean, there's a hell of a lot of people watching it on iPlayer, which is great. Sadly, we don't get money for that but otherwise I'd be loaded <laughs> it's been like millions of hits um so yeah I think as soon as we can uh, sadly because this lockdown is so bad we were going to again do it in March but it's looking more like sort of June time so yeah you'll get it for sure 
it's there's no way it won't happen oh amazing news I, I one thing i wanted to ask you for you as an actress it, it doesn't add more pressure when it comes to comedy you know not only are you being an actress but then you've got to be funny as, as well you know is that pressurizing at times to kind of do the both because it's something that you do do naturally if anyone's watched your show smack the bony and everything else that you've been in you just deliver comedy so well I think with comedy you know I think if you play the comedy you're you're doomed I think you just got to play the truth of the situation sometimes I watch myself and I think oh that's just way too big why did you in fact funny enough when I when I'm dancing to that Usher song that I think that was very early in the series and, yeah. and it's funny but I just I just watch it and I think oh you've just you're just going too far it's really interesting that's why it's it's hard to watch yourself it's hard not to be very critical and sometimes you know directors can go oh can you you know can you almost like can you funny it up well you can't funny anything up you have to the, the great thing about all the characters in two doors down is everyone's playing it pretty straight you know when you look at look um jamie and you know gordon and all of everyone's listening and you know they, they know their relationships to one another and what's lovely is that as the series goes on we we've become like a little crew that you know we really you know when it's someone else's close-up everyone is focused because sometimes you can be on sets where it's your it's your close-up and people are on their phones and they're just bored and they're you know this is a real um focused crew and that that, that makes the comedy better because it's more real really yeah you can't really play comedy i think you can just be honest so you know when you go back to you know to the very beginning for you when you were growing up was being an actress something that was always a, an ambition of yours then was it something that you were always interested in uh no not really i um what happened i i went to we moved up to scotland when i was 12 you know from to the middle of nowhere and i was at this really rough state school and it was pretty terrifying because I was an English girl in a in a big rough Scottish school and with an English accent and I you know that it was it was quite uh it was scary and I think I got out of situations by doing impressions of Basil Fawlty and Sybil Fawlty and sort of made people laugh and then luckily my English teacher told me to join the drama group Thank God, because that sort of saved me from, and I, a, I made some friends and I could play, you know, sort of bitchy. It was, but I wasn't doing comedy and I, I didn't sort of get the bug and go, I must be an actress. I sort of fannied around and did A-levels and then I chose to do drama at Manchester. So that was, no, it was never a burning ambition. But when I got to, after uni, I just started doing stand-up because... I started writing monologues. I, I I don't know why that happened. You know, things just sort of, I didn't want to be a waitress anymore. <laughs> I wanted to perform. So I started writing some monologues and then I started performing them on the circuit in London. That's how it started. I mean, I, I, I've got so many of, of the projects that you've worked on, but again, a lot of people will know um, you from Smack the Pony. And I mean, before we had the Catherine Tate show, Little Britain uh, and the other sketch shows, I mean, you were we're doing this and there's so many one of the scenes I always remember was when you had these kind of pants that were meant to tuck in fat and then there's a scene where it rolls up your neck and it's just layers and it's just there's so many moments in that show uh, again the the coffee drinking where it's you know she, um the guy says to you that do you know you can tell a lot about a lady by the way she she drinks her drink <laughs> and yeah. you're doing trying to be seductive with this um cappuccino i mean what are your memories uh from the show because it's just it's one of those shows that have become over time more and more legendary and it, it keeps getting a following even though it's not uh you know still on tv it still gets a, a massive following yeah i mean i'm mean, just literally two days ago someone people people put stuff on facebook don't they they put sketches yeah. and they share they share sketches and because this was pre-internet you know, we had no, I mean, pre kind of mobile phones or anything. Um, I just used to wait for phone calls after Smack had gone out on the telly and think, is it any good? And then the phone would start ringing. People go, oh, dude, it's fucking great. It's so weird. It's so different. I love the songs. I love your stupid, you know, the first song we ever did was Sometimes I'm a Horse. And it was like a kind of piss take of the cause. Um, 
I think we just sat around for so many years in a basement improvising everything and writing a lot of it ourselves. It, I think that's what gives it longevity. We, we really put in the work um, about stuff that we found funny and, you know, we were all pretty, I mean, it's, we, we're, we're talking like 20, 20 years ago. Um, so it's amazing it's still got such resonance. And I've met a lot of really amazing uh, women who are in their twenties now, who were like directors and writers and performers, who were completely inspired watching that aged sort of ten and eleven. So I, I love the fact that it's inspired a whole raft of of new, you know, people performing, writing. Yeah, I think it's 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 just one of those things that that it still keeps. It still hasn't lost its. I don't know. It hasn't dated hugely. There's some mm. sketches that have sort of fall flat, but on the whole, it's it's just different. It's there's no punchline. The camera just wanders off. You know, it, it's it's got it's definitely got its own kind of brand. And um, I think people have tried to sort of copy it a bit in adverts and various things. But I think uh, it's just one of those shows that people absolutely love. A bit like you with Two Doors Down. It's a kind of they watch it again and again and again and and love it, which I love. Um, do you remember the, uh, the the hot stone massage <laughs> sketch where she like, takes a chunk out of this poor lady's back? I mean, there's <laughs> so many um, moments. And again, the way you delivered them are just um, incredible. But apart from obviously Two Doors Down, you know, can we expect anything else from you? I mean, I know it's a, a tricky time at the moment in regards to theatres being closed, um, you know, and a lot of TV work has, has dried up. So is there anything that you are working on that you can tell us about? Not really, I'm afraid. It's really very, very catastrophic for our industry. Um, any any stuff that was ongoing has been shelved. Any projects that were coming up have been put on hold. So I did something called The Duchess on Netflix with the Catherine Ryan show. Um, and I played a, a, a sort of quite and actually quite a straight character in that, um, which was really interesting and, and different for me. Um, so there's meant that could be another series, but, and I'm working on stuff, but it's, it's just, it's like, it's like, you know, shooting blanks into the, into the wilderness. It's very, very, I mean, I'm writing a book about, um, sort of my, my life alongside the roles. So the roles I've played, you know, in TV and film and theatre alongside the roles I, I, I played in, you know, that I am in life just to look at how, the, I mean, some of the, some of the sort of terrible parts we were offered and the sort of, you know, desperate cougars and the sort of German prostitutes and you go, where are all the really good, you know, empowered roles? It's getting better. But I mean, some of the stuff is pretty, pretty bad. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to focus on that. But and two doors down is the next thing that I'm that I'm doing, and I don't really want to do theatre uh, when it starts. It's just offered a, a thing, uh, um, but my daughter's got GCSEs. Well, or even though they've been cancelled, I just kind of have to be around until the summer for her. Um, so yeah, sorry, it's not more exciting. Um, who knows what will happen? We well, can't I'm fly in places. We can't go and do auditions. We can't go and meet people. It's very very weird um yeah well, you've made a lot of people happy by saying that you know your next project is of course two doors down so that's uh that's gonna make a lot of people happy um you mentioned theater there and, and theater has been a big part of your life for, for so many years and it's something that you've you've worked on on numerous occasions it's so different to tv in a sense where you're going out there and it's live you know there, there's no room for mistakes as such you can't stop and, and redo it so do you have a preference between television and theater or do you enjoy them in kind of different ways I mean, theatre is such an amazing feeling. It's a bit like stand up is the is the elixir of of a, of of feedback and feeling incredible. If you make a whole room of huge room of people laugh, it's a wonderful feeling. Um, but if you're working in a group in a live situation, that also is the most amazing feeling. But it's hardcore, and if you've got kids, it's really exhausting. You know, there's eight shows a week it's the repetition, it's the staying fit, it's the, um, oh Christ, I've got a sore throat, oh shit, you know, I can't sing. I, it, it's really kind of provi provokes a sort of neurosis, whereas 
two doors down I got ill uh once and they just had to rewrite and film for like three or four days without me uh they had to rewrite a whole scene where I'd gone somewhere you know so you can sort of but in theatre that that's I mean they don't often have they don't always have understudies so you have this terrible thing of you can't miss shows but I absolutely love theatre because all your mates can come you can go out after it's it's immediate and it and it's gone so it's a bit like an etch -a sketch picture you shake the you shake the frame and that's it that show's gone no one's filmed it I mean the only thing I've ever watched on a theatre was Twelfth Night at the Olivier which I did a couple of years ago and they they did a live stream to cinemas and stuff and then they did it on put it on the tv so I watched it through kind of fingers and Actually, you know, for a piece of film theatre, it was really, really good, I thought. Um, so I, I kind of, I love the thing of in, in TV, you come together, you meet a whole load of people and then you all disappear. Same in theatre, same in theatre. But um, the satisfaction of every night you've got an audience, whereas with TV, you've got to wait for three or four months before there's any feedback. And sometimes no people don't even call up, say anything. I only had a few texts about about the Christmas special. I was, you know, you kind of think, oh, my, because I'm not on any social media, so I never know what people are thinking. So the writer always sends me lovely tweets and reviews, but it's down to my mates to text me and go, oh, I love that for me to, that's my feedback. Whereas in theatre, you've got a whole audience every night laughing. And yeah. yeah, so, I mean, I went to a hospital. I did Panto in Glasgow last year. Oh God, that was really, anyway, never again. Um, but I went, to, uh, I went to a hospital on Christmas day and, you know, I suddenly realized how many people love Two Doors Down because every single nurse there and doctor were, was, was a fan and parent and kid. It was like, wow, this is a kind of really, so often you don't really know that things are, you know, like you, yeah. you know, it's really, lovely to have feedback because you don't often know if you're not on any social media what people what people think of it apart from the ratings obviously but it's nice to meet real people who who love it I mean it was one of those shows I was kind of surprised when I when I first discovered it from my um, it was my godparents who told me and it was kind of I couldn't believe that it wasn't on BBC One on Christmas Day because it's that good. And I, I started ringing up my family saying, you need to check out this show. Uh, and then my mum and dad rang me and said, you know, you're their favourite character because I think they can probably relate to you. Um, <laughs> but it's it's just, it's getting more and more popular. And if you go, I mean, you haven't got Twitter, but it, all, all you need to do now is type in two doors down and every day there will be something from uh, a load of people that have just discovered it, like you said, on iPlayer. And I think the next series... Will, will really take off because like you said during this lockdown people have had a chance to discover new mm. tv shows and two doors down is definitely one of those it's the you know every time you go on iplayer now it's the suggested uh program for a lot of people great oh that's really good to hear and what did your so your godparents did they just come across it then or how did they yeah they because normally their suggestions are horrific. It's normally some, <laughs> something to do with Victorians. And me, me and my um, my husband, we're, we're not into it at all. And they said about putting a show on, we thought, of course, okay. And then we were like, okay, this is really cool for them. Um, and we just fell in love with it. And then he's told his family. And, and it's just word of mouth. And now his sister, it's her favourite show. And my mum and dad watch it all the time. And the Christmas special. Um, I, again, I said to you before we come up, I was just a bit gutted it wasn't on Christmas Day because Christmas Day this year I thought the TV was you know wasn't as good unfortunately as it normally is you know quite understandably but then you get two doors down which was just incredible it was exactly what you'd expect having Christine go into the lodge with um you know with, with Colin and Kathy and it was just brilliant and we saw a different almost vulnerable side to, to Kathy and I think you played it so well because we normally see a you know she can brush anything off but actually someone like Beth, who she does think a lot of, giving us some criticism, um, it really hurt her, you know, and she did that react almost like a, a toddler, you know, when they're told off, they, they react in a way that's kind of, you know, quite petulant, but actually deep Doing down, this to, see their husband. She was kind of going yeah. like that, kind of talk to her like a kid would go like that, wouldn't, wouldn't they, yeah. But there's yeah, that vulnerable that's... side that we started to see. Hmm. Yeah, well, she is vulnerable. She's damaged, and Beth is basically her, the only friend she's really got. So, 
when she upset when Beth actually had a go at her she couldn't couldn't first she was outraged and then she was just I mean somebody somebody called me and said they cried I thought god that's really good actually um when Kathy you know made up with Beth and that's that's all yeah. that's all you want. you want people to laugh and cry is bloody perfect well, in the next couple of weeks, we have got um, Jonathan is going to come on the show and I'm going to give him the, a quiz as well. And I think he's going to, you've got 10 out of 10. So it's going to be a, a really big ask for him to even compete with you. Oh, I tell you, he will, he will <laughs> get 10 out of 10. He, he's a stickler. He's an absolute, I mean, he's, he's so on his lines. He's got them all written down in his pocket. Um, wow. And he gets them out and he checks them out and puts them in. He's, he's always like um yeah he I, I bet you he'll get 10 out of 10 as well but i need a better present than him <laughs> i mean we, we're hoping one day we get the incredible um elaine on the show you know she is just the the way she performs that that character um and the, like i said earlier the little looks that she gives and she yeah she's just a phenomenal actress you must have a lot of fun working with elaine because she's been in everything obviously rabsy nez but um you know she's a big uh, figure in, in scotland Oh, she's just the absolute queen of of Scotland, really. That's what she is. She's she's a big-hearted, incredibly talented, beautiful, political, strong, amazing feminist kind of. I just absolutely. I'm sure she'd do the show. We'll have to give her a little nudge. But um, you know, like everyone, we're all finding the lockdown hard because we're not. She she normally does a, a kind of one woman show, which is stand up. She's got an amazing voice singing we do this kind of when we're on set we do this we do this jazz singing we do kind of scat offs so both both her, which is really annoys the rest of the cast but makes us howl with laughter so we do kind of cleo lane jazz oh, singing and uh <laughs> we we want to we want to write something about these these old jazz artists who are touring the east nuke of fife that's so we've got that that's something we're um we're thinking about writing um because yeah, I she laughs a lot. She corpses. It's called corpsing. She she laughs a lot on set, and I don't because if I start laughing, I I can't stop, and I can't get I can't get it back. So I'm very severe. So there's some great outtakes of me just utterly stony faced, and her just unable. And the more strict I get about not not laughing, the worse <laughs> she gets. And and often it's because when I'm stuck up there in Glasgow and I can't come home and I can't see my family, I get quite low because I'm, I'm you know, I'm there for weeks and then, and they can all go home to their families. And I go home to a little sort of B and B and, and go, Oh God, we're only on episode two and I've got another eight weeks of this. Um, so I get kind of like, can, I, can we, can we just get on with this and not fuck about, excuse me, not mess about. Um, we're not live, are we? No, 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 no. Not at all, no anyway yeah she's brilliant i'm sure she'll i'm sure she'll do the show i'm sure she'll and do you know I, i've seen the outtakes because they, they put it, the bbc have put it on their official um youtube page and we can see exactly what you mean you know she's always laughing but there's an incredible outtake of you when you're doing your dancing um at the the housewarming party but i didn't realize you didn't have the music on so you were literally just dancing and i, I it's something when you watch you, you wouldn't even think that you didn't have the you know the music was added so the fact that you're doing this incredible little routine to Usher, but actually the music isn't on. Yeah, that's right. It's very annoying when you can't do it to the music. Really, same with the wedding dance. We couldn't have any of that. We couldn't have any of that. That um, because of the sound and our voices. That you know, sadly, we have one go, which is a kind of rehearsal where we can just you can do it, and then you just yeah. got to kind of mime it. So it's all a bit lame. Feels lame, even though it doesn't look it. Well, honestly, Dune, this has been an absolute privilege for me because, like, you can probably tell I'm a massive fan of, of your work, and you are just an incredibly funny, uh, not just a, a, a comedy actor, but just an actress. Like you said, the way you you um, performed on the Christmas special and the fact that you said people were ringing you saying they got emotional, I think that's down to the the powerful performance that, that you put in. So thank you so much for taking time today to uh, to join us on the show and have a chat about the uh, incredible career you've had so far, and obviously the, the rest is still to come. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's been a real boost, actually. I've needed this. I can go down and shout slightly less at my daughter for um, not doing 
thanks very yeah. much and um and um i like your tartan suit very much as well <laughs>